It has become an end of the school year annual event for students in an English as a Second Language class at Louisville's Atherton High School. The event is a scavenger hunt using GPS or Global Positioning System receivers to locate downtown landmarks in the River City. And for some of the students, it was their first time to see the city close up. Um, how many teams are there? Nine. Nine, okay. Nine groups of students set out from Louisville Slugger Field, armed only with handheld GPS receivers and little information about the landmarks they were to find. By entering latitude and longitude coordinates of the landmarks, the students were able to figure out which way to go, and the rest was up to them. One of the things that kids are going to have to constantly learn is technology. And so what I want them to be able to learn is that they can quickly and confidently learn a brand new technology, work as a team, work as a team to solve a problem, and get the job done. And from that, they gain the confidence that, that gosh, I can figure out anything. And these are instructions on how to use GPS. Scott Wade has been teaching the ESL class for four years and has conducted the GPS scavenger hunt each year. This was the second time in downtown Louisville after two years at the Louisville Zoo. So to set the next one. The University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service provides the GPS units and the expertise to use them. So we take the time when they're finished with the main, you know, meet of their, their school year and bring them downtown and show them a new technology and also show them a way that they, um, you know, can learn a new skill that will help them in the future, hopefully. 90 students from 14 countries participated in the scavenger hunt. Their mission was to locate seven downtown landmarks, such as the Louisville Slugger Factory and Museum, and the Cathedral of the Assumption. Their destination was 4th Street Live, where the scavenger hunt ended. You know how the arrows were telling you to go sometimes uh, straight and then it would make another arrow? Correct. And then when you would turn to the other side, it tells you to go off again the other side of where you were at. You know? but you, did you always have it pointed upwards, though? That's the important thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. But you got back. Yep. Yeah, you made it back. So that, what, that, what do you say about the experience about this? Uh, it, was, it was interesting. I've never done it before, but... <laughs> there was a case uh, where a boy from Colombia was had the GPS and was going one direction. Uh, another boy from Cuba was going a different direction, and they had this sorted out. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out they were both going in a way the right direction. They just couldn't go through a building. They had to go around it. The question is, do you go left or right? Mm -hmm. And so they had to negotiate and decide and, and, and peacefully work it out. Yeah. Uh, and with an Iraqi boy right in the middle of that trying to help him sort it out. <laughs> And of course, when you have multiple languages, they have to use English, mm -hmm. kind of the Tower of Babel effect. And so much of it is focused in the classroom, educational experiences, but being able to get out here, knowing that they're going to have the opportunity to be downtown and enjoying all the, the events of a, a city like this. And so they're out for the entire day, and the entire day they have an educational experience beyond the classroom. The idea of the scavenger hunt occurred to Scott Wade four years ago on the 200th anniversary of the Lewis and Clark expedition across America, which left Louisville in 1803. The ESL teacher Scott Wade says he may change the course again next year, maybe even move it to a state forest and after that to Chicago or even New York City.